How long Aftaba remained camped with Mrs. Spice, he often wondered. She fed him as much as she thought necessary. He helped her water the pony and sort the bottles, but would not join her on her sulky rides around the town. He was happiest when he could escape and moon around the rubbish dump, where, it seemed, the inhabitants of Mungindribble had shred their true selves, and he was always making discoveries which corroborated certain suspicions he already had of men. Sometimes he would lie on an old mattress, where its overflow of springs and stuffing allowed, and dream the paintings which circumstances prevented him temporarily from doing. He was painting all the time, except in paint, of course. In these new pictures which his mind created, the bodies of men were of old springs and rubber, equally, with the hair bursting out of them, and sometimes a rusty rabbit trap for jaws. He would paint the souls inside the bodies, because Mr. Cauldron had told him all about the souls. Often he would paint them in the shape of unopened tins, of soup or asparagus or some such, but pretty battered, and the contents all fermented, waiting to burst out in answer to a nail. He would snooze and compose. The old, broken-down clock, with the altar lights jingling and tinkling inside, was very reminiscent of his former guardian. Motion still eluded him, though. He could apprehend it, but knew that he would not have been able to convey it. And sometimes the souls, which were the most interesting and obsessive part of his paintings, should have leapt up in the bodies, like the wind of metho, or the delirious throb and dribble of love.